It's been a good while since I've done a Cleese Alpha video, huh? It's been even long since I've done one properly. And you know what? That's a sinful hate crime against humanity. Or something. And I want to get that rectified. Now, while my issues with mints were both moral and in design, and other changes to the way they work actually just for the issues in both angles, go figure. Here, they are purely in the fact these intros are just purely done. You see, Cleese Alpha does not introduce mechanics. It's a terrible teach for a player, and I'm here to show you why. But, I firstly just find some terms I'll be using throughout the video, so let's just go over a few now. Levels in PZ2 mods have, mainly, three different types. Intro, challenge, and a minigame. Intro stages exist to introduce some things, so the player can understand the new thing and become able to play around it. These can also introduce plants, but generally these are for grid items. Things like tombstones, power tiles, slide tiles, and for zombies. Mostly because these are more important lessons to teach. Challenge stages are meant to develop a player's knowledge and test them on their ability to deal with what has just been introduced. Has a player learned how graves work? Yes? Then place a few more down further to the left and see if a player can deal with them. This is a simple premise, and the majority of the levels will tend to fall into this category. The final category are minigames. These are levels which tend to give a player a break and let them do something else for a bit. Generally, these are somewhat rare. We won't be talking about them much further, but I can say the Zombos Vices also fall in this category for context there. These level types are generally important, as they form world structure and level progression. The player spends a level to learn about something so they can deal with it in the future, usually in an easier level so that after the last challenge, the player can feel skilled. Then the player is challenged to deal with the knowledge they have gained, and apply it through some interesting circumstance. This is a classic PZ2 mod design approach, try and true because it is satisfying. It shows a player what to expect, how to deal with it, and keeps them pushing forward. It also creates a world structure automatically around itself, which is very convenient. Needless to say, Ecclesia Alpha is going to muck with it somewhat. But it's a little more complicated than that. So let's go through what Ecclesia Alpha actually does, why it's wrong, and how it could be corrected, eh? A while back, GoodP2 released a video covering the design philosophy of Ecclesia Alpha and why it exists. Something important to us here is how they introduce things. They said they're upset at how so many plans ended up low on tier lists, and resumed as well as because people were introduced to them poorly, in a nutshell. So as a result, levels are now designed to the plans you just unlocked in mind. To give credit to Good B2 here, this is indeed A reason these plans were used so rarely. However, they only look for one reason these plants were so low on tier lists, completely ignoring a fact that there are multiple factors as to why these plants are so unused. The real reason is actually down more so to nicheness, or being outclassed, and why it's being actually difficult to use. Plants lower down mostly include things like Lightning Reed, Shadow Leaf, Magnet, and Chili Bean. Plants which, at least in locked tier, lack a major niche or require specific circumstances to be effective. There's also a running theme of low damage instances being down here too, which are generally effective against specific enemies. The plants that ranked high are general usage or round effect of attackers, and instances that can really deal with anything. The lower tiers are niche specific attackers that need certain elements to be effective in general. Regardless, this is relevant because of a change to the level design made here. Every level is designed to the plant you just unlocked in mind. In other words, Wave Freeze are gonna start long like this now, and you ain't gonna do crap about it! This is meant to make a player use a new plant, learn what it does, and show that it's actually valuable. Inherently, not actually a stupid idea, and it makes sense. If a player can see ways with his new plant they've unlocked as useful, they are more likely to consider it good, right? Well, no, actually. It actually seems to have somewhat had the reverse effect for a few plants. People seem to hate these plants because of these levels. Let me explain. I did a form in preparation for this video, and ended up putting up a large amount of questions here. Now, one of the questions were to rank some plants I noticed being low on tier lists, with other plants I considered roughly equal in terms of viability. And these plants still rank the worst. It's actually mostly equal between people who played both Bayer and Alpha, where these plants actually rank too which is super interesting to me. It seems that Alpha's changes didn't do a whole lot. I'll have the data in the description if you want to draw your conclusions. I am merely one person, and I am fully aware I can easily fall to confirmation bias, but I think there's some information worth looking into with this, so I shall look further. Another very interesting fact was that nobody said, when picking plants, they considered what they just unlocked. Actually, only one person even brought it up, but I know who did this personally, and I can say they were definitely were thinking a ton. Instead, a ton of people had strats where they ended up defaulting to. Instead, I should note that more people said whatever is always a jest or just random. So imagine a lot of people may have used the plans they just unlocked, but not particularly going for them. Seems to me that people don't actually gravitate towards these plants more than default. This isn't a surprise. I can imagine as a child you didn't exactly try to use garlic when you unlocked it in Plant for Zombies 1, or the like. 
Now, this is where problems really start. Remember, players don't naturally gravitate towards using your plans they just unlocked. And now, alpha levels start to look more like this. Levels built around specific plants used at specific times, being played while players, most likely, aren't actually using these plants. This is a problem for specific levels, where the intended plant is essentially required or expected, and the level proceeds to build off from this itself. In a lot of levels, this can result in a level being very difficult, and may be practically impossible for new players unless they have the right plant in use. This is especially troublesome, because the game itself takes this simple fact for granted, when, as we've discussed, this is not a consistent thing. An example would be 8-4, Punch Spits. This level is specifically and expressly designed around Primal Pea Shooter. It may seem inherently obvious that the zombies here should push the player in the direction of Primal Pea Shooter, due to the nature of the zombie layout being Fossil Head, Bucket Head, and Gargantua, with a plant limit. However, I should note this level also introduces to drop scallions, an ambush that spawns three super fast imps. And that those gargantuas are specifically immune to Primal Pea Shooter's knockback. With his knowledge in mind, a player may not actually use Primal Pea Shooter. Without, your options really boil down into Snow Pea plus instant kills. Other strategies don't do too well, usually, as they get overwhelmed very quickly by the huge HP pools. And there's only one gargantuan in this level, which a player will not know, which makes this inclusion in general solely a way to make Primal Pea Shooter look worse. A true masterclass in zombie choice. This has caused 8-4 to be said a few times in the form as one of the hardest levels in the main game, to people who need to exclude specifically at a glance. Another level that has been said a lot out of seemingly nowhere was 10-5, which was said a few times. This is Punk Palace, a level that has a 1,000 sun spending limit, permanent punk jam, charming hits throughout, and so forth. I honestly don't know how to approach this level without using Red Stinger, and the player actually lacks any counters to punk. It certainly doesn't help, but it's the first time a player will actually encounter punk jam, and this is a serious problem. This is the point where the design turns from questionable to outright bad. No other level in Ninja Safe Tour was as hated as 10 5. In fact, 66% of the time a level from Ninja Safe Tour was considered hard, it was from 10 5 and no other level had more than one person commenting on it. Most people felt the game was thinking about the hardest in the introduction to a new special zombie and environmental modifier. Remember, Punk Jam speeds zombies up by a lot, and only existed for a single wave in this world career, and nowhere else was seemingly as difficult as this one level for this world. This level's difficulty is inflated by essentially acquiring a specific plant, and further inflated by being the first time the player has to deal speed up and punk for the first time and finally boosted by having conventional counters to said gimmick be unavailable, being the like of Snoopy. This level still wasn't ranked particularly high as levels everybody hated, but the fact is here is a concern, as this level has obviously had the difficulty inflated through what I consider poor introducing. Now, some levels didn't have their difficulty obviously affected by this, and not all levels have their difficulty caused by this either. For instance, 38 is probably the most hated level in the game, showing up the most of any level that people struggled on, and is introducing anything at all. But in saying that, I also have to point out the second most hated was 12-4, which is a conveyor that introduces a player to Importer. Or, well, it's the first user to Importer in the game if you don't touch side content. And it does a horrendous job of showing them in action. Now that we've seen how the infrastructure caused some weird issues with difficulty progression, now we're discussing something debatably more important. The fact these levels utterly fail to introduce a player to anything may quite literally be seen as exactly how you don't want to introduce things in the game. You all saw this coming, so let's look at how tutorials tend to work in PvZ and see why this is the case. The first job of the tutorial is to introduce the new mechanic more formally, so the player understands how it works. This can be done in Plan for Zombies through dialogue for more complicated enemies, though it depends a lot on a level and mechanic where this is necessary. For instance, a zombie like Explorer has a very obvious ability that the player can react to on the fly. Meanwhile, a zombie like Jester has an ability the player will need to deal with from selecting plants. It also isn't always necessary even in these cases, as long as the player has a reason to bring the plants that deal with the zombie in question. For instance, in Plan for Zombies Plan for Zombies, the player is told that Cactus can hit both ground and air targets immediately before being presented with a target that is clearly airborne, clearly telling a player what to use. This is important because future levels need to build off what these mechanics do. If a zombie ability is known for reaching a later level, 
then the player will be confused and will lose often trying to properly grasp how the enemy actually works, which isn't fun for anybody. The second job is to show how to kind of a zombie without killing the player for it. The first excavator zombie in the game should be to deal with, so that the player can have had two, but should show up early in the level so that if the player can't deal with it, it can quickly be discovered and fixed. The rest of the intro level should be dedicated to giving a player a brief usually, so they can set up a true challenge later. This is also important for similar reasons as before. A level needs to show how to counter something, as often challenges are focused on reducing that counterplay and making counterplay inherently harder. If you ensure have how to counter a gimmick, then when that gimmick is being used in a challenging way, it's going to become difficult and make the challenge unfair. Ecclesi Alpha routinely watches both of these, and 12-4 is an example of this. 12-4 is the first time the player will meet Importer as a zombie. Importer has a few tricks up its sleeve. Its main ability is that when it reaches a gold tile, it will turn into a tent and start spawning zombies constantly. Though if killed early, it will instead drop a backpack and lay him on the ground. That acts like a grave. It's a fairly simple ability, but I want to point out that 12-4 starts off by spawning one on each lane, with gold tiles at the far right. You likely will not see Importer himself doing anything, as the level is just trying to survive with the consequences of them activating. You are torn shown with no counterplay. And the first level in the world, which uses imports of C9 gold tiles, is 12-6. A level dedicated to reducing to other things, specifically and expressly. Importer, as a result, is introduced to a player as something that will go off, and that actively trying to prevent from doing that is in fact a terrible plan. In fact, the player may not even learn about the backpack dropping until 12-5, which is an entirely different level and is pretty odd to me, considering 12-4 is as hated as it is. The player doesn't know an actual counterplay option. Instead, they only know the very basics, and as a result, the level does a terrible job introducing the new threat. This is a simple example of that just felt easy to cover. Importers are never introduced properly, but also are fairly consequential when compared to a lot of other zombies. Usually. So it does make more sense to me to, quote unquote, introduce them in this way. It's actually a common theme. Most zombies will have intros that mostly just feature them, and thus are introduced a lot better. There's a few of them is smart mostly because they try to double as plant intros. Weasel Hoarder is the best example of this in the game. Weasel Hoarder is a zombie that, upon taking a certain amount of damage, spawns a bunch of low-ish HP weasels. The level itself lacks any additional gimmicks, except tricky slider tiles, but he's less of a threat and also just a fun thing that exists. The issue here is with Dusk. It is pre this level, and this makes Weasel and Dusk individually introduced far weaker, because it doesn't exactly help here. Dusk has some unique traits that do need introduction, such as it being inedible by zombies, which the game totally fails to explain to the player. It's also not a good counter to Weasel at all. Plants like Spikeweed and Bong Choi are simply just better counters. Being inedible actually hurts Dusk Lobber too, as Weasel are very likely to run through plants that should air probably be at the front. It also doesn't help that its damage is so low, it needs to hit Weasels three times to kill them, which is a long time for Dusk Lobber, considering it's a lobber. Plant intros in general are incredibly debatable as for importance, as we discussed, but I do think that introducing Dusk here was a massive mistake. I also don't think Dusk could ever truly be introduced well here, but that's a separate issue. But Dusk is introduced badly, and the players encourage the poor counter to deal with Weasel Hoarders. It's a problem, as it hurts both the plant and the zombie. Though, there's a much bigger issue, because Weasel Hoarders aren't exactly the most dangerous zombie of all time. But one thing is far more dangerous than these zombies. It's a small thing that the game calls Bug Tiles. Bug Tiles are super dangerous. When a zombie or plant stands on them, they will spawn a lot of projectiles on the right side of the screen, which can quickly rack up damage and destroy lanes. These are probably the single most hated gimmick in Ecclesi for this reason, and so on the poll I made, I asked a lot of people what they thought the best character them was. I should note in the question several people just complain about dangerous AR, which is just amusing. Anyways, as you're probably imagining, the most common counter given was Intensive Carrot, followed by Tallnut. It's interesting then that a fairly rare answer was Pumpkin. Though admittedly Pumpkin isn't fantastic as a counter, it's certainly more similar to Intensive Carrot than anything. Also the reason Intensive Carrot is so high should be very clear. 12-6 specifically introduces Carrot Tier 3 as a counter and a lot of people who played Alpha specifically said Tier 3 Carrot was the best counter. This is also likely why Pumpkin wasn't said a whole lot, as no level in the game specifically calls it out, and Pumpkin isn't really normally accessible either. In addition, people who haven't seen Bug Tiles in Alpha are far more likely to say tacky plants, meaning things like Peanut and Coconut Cannon. This is interesting because those were the most popular characters in Beta. 
I think both these are wrong as a miscount in case you're curious, but I could be totally wrong as bug tiles look for everybody really. I will say that, generally, bug tiles remain hated because their counterplay isn't obvious, or rather, people don't approach bug tiles with the right mindset, and I think that's due to how they introduced and used. Bug tiles were always exceedingly rare in the main game, partially due to the fact that everybody hates them, but no level really seems to show the player how to actually deal with these things. 12-6 suggests the player use tier 3 carrot, but also spams instant killing Garg, because that rendered the main benefit of tier 3 carrot, it multiplying HP by 15 times, entirely worthless. It also uses more Gargs than any other level in the game, but justifies by throwing plant food down the player's throat in the mid late game. None of which really helps the player figure out how to deal with bug tiles. And levels following this use bug tiles in a more aggressive and complex way, so the player never really learns how to deal with them. The best counter, as far as I'm aware, is actually just not allow zombies to go on them in the first place, and using plants like Rotobagger to make sure they just don't trigger. The game never explains the element fully, instead claiming character the best counter, and I do have to believe this is why Bugta are so hated. Even at Alpha, where you'd expect that to have been cleared up of them being used a lot more. For the record, by the way, Tier 3 Carrot isn't bad as a counter, but the reason is a good counter specifically reviving walls in front of the bug tiles to make them hard to activate. I just want to clarify, as I realise I explained it a bit poorly here, this is, again, minor in a vacuum. Bug tiles being poorly introduced doesn't kill the game, but it shows a running trend, one that has likely become worse as the game goes on. But it's also super strange that, despite this, Monday Graves and Dark Ages, Graves can only be removed at Great Buster, ended up with a level which is a one flagger, doesn't use any specials whatsoever bar a few gargantuas, and in general didn't use the Monday Graves as actively as 12.6 did. I don't really have an explanation for this, beyond Dark Ages just in general seemingly being better designed, but it's super strange this is the case considering how relatively minor these graves tend to be, at least compared to the hell beast that is bug tiles. In general, though, bug tiles are super hated, so chilling out with a bug tile usage in the levels around them might have been the smart play. 12.6 should have been a two flagger without trying to introduce current the capacity, with the only specials being something like Crystal Skull and Excavator. Weaker specials that, while they support bug tiles, they have easy counter play the player can employ to help ease them into the mechanic. It's just super strange to me that bug tiles get the constant usage high stakes, while lesser gimmicks get just much more simplistic introductions. Hmm. I suppose this is partially the fault of trying to introduce too much too quickly. I suppose. DA as a whole is generally considered one of the best part 2s among people to talk to, though it also does include probably the single worst plan reduction in the game, from my perspective, for a similar reason to bug tile sucking. 13-9. 13-9 is a chomper intro. It's the first level the player will play after unlocking chomper, and it's... interesting. This level has 5 endangered chompers at the far left, and the level itself will spam the ever-loving god out of shadow zombies, a zombie which will walk past all your plants, and has decent enough HP. This would make Chomper a decent pick here, except this isn't really how the level tends to play out. The issue comes in two main forms, the Graves and the Zombie Selection. Chomper as a plant is a melee plant, and while he has some insta-like usage for slamming specific targets, he isn't a very good counter against Wizards in the slightest, and are totally enabled to kill Gargantuas without heavy support, and Conids aren't exactly great for it. Chomper's main job as a plant is to act as an early game that is super reliable and capable of dealing with a lot of high HP threats, such as nice and buckets. This level gives no such threat that does this, the closest it gets are shadow zombies, which have less HP than a bucket head by a fairly significant margin. As for graves, graves can just tend to clog up lanes where Chomper would like to be placed down, and while Chomper himself can get rid of graves very quickly, he's not going to be able to get rid of graves this quickly, and he can only get rid of one at a time when placed down. Not exactly fantastic for it. So what does this have to do with bug tiles? Well, bug tiles became a serious problem because people didn't know how to counter them and being able to kind of bug tiles makes them super difficult to deal with. But, by the same token, this can also result in plants being hated, underestimated, or otherwise unused. Chomper is a plant that already struggles to see usage, but the first time a player sees Chomper, its weaknesses are super highlighted. People are going to drop Chomper quickly, and they clearly do. This is also why so many people tend to default to reliable options like Repeater, in case you're unaware. Plants which lack weaknesses are practically always going to work, so people are going to use those above all else. These levels are also beatable by these fairly standard plants. Cold Snapdragon, Starfruit, Homing, etc. These plants became so widely used solely because of a general purpose, and as people default to them more and more, levels trying to introduce plants are going to find it harder and harder to do so. 
And then, when the player finds a few things that can deal with these general options, the player is going to struggle more, because they haven't been able to improve and learn the plants they need to use to beat the level. It's a problem. I'm not going to claim that Alice is unplayable because of doing things badly. That would be exceedingly dumb, and a totally incorrect claim. But by the same token, I also don't want you to make the claim that how a game introduces mechanics is totally worthless, because that's totally inaccurate in its own right. The way a game introduces itself is key to the overall experience, and to an extent, can totally shift the experience of someone playing it. This mostly just drives a huge spike between veterans and new players, however, which is debatably a major issue. Ecclesi Alpha, as well as in general, is very dependent on players becoming skilled at the game for various reasons, to be able to complete more content and do more challenges. Introducing things so poorly means that being able to accomplish a high level skill over the game is a massive challenge, and one that the game will not help with. In general, people tend to quit Ecclesi Alpha and Ecclesi Beta early, and those reasons aren't just difficulty. Ecclesi in general has never been able to introduce things properly, and to an extent, I don't think many mods have learned it either but people who get past this trend seem to be more willing to complete the game. This is something that can definitely be improved upon Ecclesi Alpha and the other mods in the future, and would help improve the experience significantly for newer players. Though, frankly, this is probably for the best first days like this? Maybe. I've been seriously concerned about something for a while now that Ecclesi Alpha has been doing that, now I've started to look at it, has really been bothering me. Uh, not just the mints. I don't like those, and you probably already know that fact well. No, I'm more concerned about war parties, and how they are made. If my understanding is correct, these may be the most shadiest thing in Ecclesi Alpha right now, and I am really seriously concerned. Though I'll need to do my research to ensure I'm correct, and I'll be another day, maybe. Visit the creeps, and have a good one.